Hello, today I want to demonstrate my new 3D printed circular sock knitting machine. I'll give you a little rundown of it to begin with. It's got a 60 slot cylinder. I can get it to focus here. Well, it's going to refuse to, to focus, but This thing took me about five days to print. And then there's also this piece, which is called the spanner, and it's the basically the basket that starts and weighs down the um, the tube that you're knitting. And here is the first project I knit with it. I tried to make a bonnet set up on it. I didn't quite understand the instructions when I did it the first time, so the fold over's <laughs> that long. And then there's just this little piece here that I did after the fold. But um, it came out pretty nice. Uh, I believe this one's 26 stitches per 4 inches. Um, then I did a second bonnet, which is to that funny looking area there. Um, and I only did the fold for that part there, which is what the instructions originally tried to tell me. Um, then I used it to continue to knit a tube. Um, again, I got 26 stitches per 4 inches. However, when I switched to this yarn, which was definitely a sock yarn, um, all of this yarn I got from a uh, lady on Buy Nothing. Um, so I don't know what most of it is. This may, may be a DK weight instead of a fingering, or maybe it's a thicker fingering and that's a thinner fingering. I don't know, but this, this was opal sock yarn. Um, and it gave me a proper 32 stitches per inch, uh, per four inches, uh, for my gauge. But I also changed the, um, the triangle, which I forget the name of at the moment, uh, the proper name of it. It's Schrieber Oben um, in the in the file, which is a German name for the files. They were all in in German, so I don't know the proper term. But this crank, make it go around. The needles come up. And are pulled down by that triangle and by the um, the raceway that's inside of it and I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you that oh hey look at that so the needle butts right on this little raceway in there um, one of the things that we did do was bought some brother ribber needles and cut them down to make them fit this they were the perfect length for this particular machine and there's a rubber band on here to hold them in. Um, so, let me show you the triangles. The Schrieber Oben. Um, I'm not going to adjust them because I've got them to that 32 stitches per inch. And there's no markings for me to then remember it later. At some point I might mark this up so that I can do it later. But if you look right in there, if it'll focus for me. There is a spot where I cut the corners of the little triangles that were printed. I can't get that to, to focus, but you can kind of see it there. They came to a point and they were overlapping and there was no way you could individually move them unless we chipped off a little corner of one of them. So we did that. And so now these two triangles, there's one on each side. Here's the knob to control it. And raise it up and down so you can kind of see behind it there's still more room for it to go up um, there's one on each side here depending on whether you want to crank it right or left um, then you would choose which raceway you want which of those triangles you want to use for your gauge and then it pulls down pulls it down and then allows it to come back up um, to form the stitch. So that's the, um, 
walkthrough of the machine. I'm now going to pause this video and um, set it up so that I can show you um, the process of getting it started. Okay, got this focused and we'll see if uh, I can get this set up and you'll be able to see it while I do it. So this is my spare yarn, my um, waste yarn. I don't know what it is exactly, but I think it's got some acrylic in it. So it should, should be nice for a waste yarn. Shouldn't stick to anything. All right, so the first thing we have to do is get the yarn to go through here. And it does take a little bit of finagling because you've got nothing to help you do it. Although I suppose if you are a spinner and you have a, um, gosh, I'm a spinner and I don't remember the name of it at the moment, um, threader. Um, you could probably use that if it's a thin enough threader. Anyway, so you have to take out a significant amount here to get it started. And of course my yarn's going to tangle a little bit here so that I can't get it out because I'm trying to pull from the center. I should have just gone from the outside. I think I will. We'll start over with that and go from the outside instead. I hate having the ball flopping around so that's why I was trying to do the center pull but if it's going to get tangled like that that's just not going to work for me. So yeah let's get a threader. Alright I've got this cute little 3D printed threader. It's from Acreworks. I did not make this. Acreworks Dot com would be where you'd get this. They have various shapes. I think they have four shapes now um, and a um, whole bunch of colors. And it's got a threader like this so it'll work in something like this. <laughs> it's super cute. These wheels actually work. Anyway, that's enough playing with that. So just get that through there find where my yarn went, make sure I got the one that wraps around the outside, and then I can just pull that on through like that. Now, again, I want to have a significant amount of it. Oh, maybe I did take from the center again. <laughs> Let's see, did I? If I could get it untangled, that would actually be easier than having the yarn flopping around all over the place. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so take out maybe a yard or two because you want enough yarn that it's going to go all the way around the spanner or basket all right and then what you want to do is you want to hold this in the center so you kind of shove your fingers in there and hold it at the top then if I remember this correctly. You're going to take and loop it on one of these, but not way over here because you have all these needles that are down. So you can't start here, you got to start at a side. And you kind of have to decide here which direction you want to end up going eventually. And I usually crank it in this direction. So it would be best if I start over here if I'm thinking that through correctly. So, you loop it around the far way here, then around this that way, and then you skip one and loop it around, and then you don't skip one on here. Loop around. So you're trying to make a cross. I don't know if you can see how I'm crossing those yarns there, but you're making a cross like that when you make these loops. But you're always skipping one of the needles before you come back and go to the spanner or basket. I hope you can see that because my hand sort of gets in the way when I loop around the basket. But all I'm doing 
is coming down around it and then th through the other side. And once I get over there, you should be able to see it. All right, skipping one, looping around the basket, skipping one, looping around the basket. Now, I don't have one of those fancy schmancy um, ways of fast forwarding all of this. So I'm not gonna keep talking about looping it around and going forward. Besides, I'm almost there. All right, so do you see how I'm coming down? And then I'm looping around. And then I'm gonna loop around this last hook here because now we have no more hooks to loop around, no more needles. So we gotta kinda hold this so it doesn't loosen up too much. And we need to advance. But since we're not trying to start any stitches yet, these need to not get in the needles. And it seems to be liking that needle. So out it goes, I hope. All right, give me a second here. It is stuck on that needle. There we go. All right, so we don't want it to start looping through there at the moment. So you kind of have to keep that out of the way as you advance these needles. And go about where you left, where you started. Because you don't really want to start making the loops yet. You can, but it's a little more complicated because then you have a lot of things you're trying to watch. Now this is what usually happens to me. I usually end up having these be too tight. And it just takes practice, I'm sure. Um, I've only threaded this. This will be the third time now. So... Um, yeah, it does take some practice. And I guess I didn't really quite need two yards of thread because it looks like, of yarn, because it looks like I'm gonna have a lot left over here. All right, now we have to advance it again. This time, however, we do want it to start making stitches, but not until it gets to that first stitch there. So we're gonna advance it until it gets Mm, to that first stitch. It does get a little tight at the beginning because you're looping those on. All right, not that one, but that one. So do you see how I put it on this side of this last needle that doesn't have any yarn on it? Although it kind of looks like it's stuck on it. There. Now, when you pull it over here, you want to make sure that you push down the yarn, otherwise it will pop off and you won't make any new stitches. So it has to go down. Um, let me see if I can show you. Okay, so here you've got the little latch. And what you want is for the latch to be open like that and the loop that you have on there already to fall down below the latch. Then the new yarn goes through this hook and as it goes down, the loop pushes that up and closes and then the old loop pops off while the hook is holding the new loop. Okay? So that's what you want to happen so that's why you have to watch here to make sure that it gets pushed off because when you're first starting there's not enough weight in here and it's a little bit uneven even though you're trying to make it as even as possible. So you gotta watch it and make sure that you push it down. Now, let's see here. Make sure it went under there. And you see how the, it's picking him up now. It's picking the yarn up from here. I hope you can see that. And I'm turning it this way just because it's easier to do that for me at this stage. Now, did that loop fall off? No, that loop did not fall off. 
And I don't know if that's because this is a 3D printed machine or if that's a um, issue that everybody has, no matter what kind of three, uh, what kind of circular sock netting machine you're using. I think it's, you know, the learning curve because it seems like the people who have posted pictures of their 3D, I mean their sock knitting on a circular sock knitting machine have shown spots where they've missed stitches because I'm assuming it's doing this exact thing where you have to kind of get it to go down. All right, so did I make my stitches? Yes, it looks like I've got a good stitch there. And this one, Hold on a second. This one I think will be fine. Okay, but we have needles that we could start looping on. So I'm going to start looping the last few here, although we can't access all of them yet. Okay, but we're almost there. See, there's just a few more stitches there that we need to advance to get it in there. And it's a little stuck. Sometimes it does that, especially at the beginning because all these stitches are so tight that it has trouble pulling them down through the triangle. And I might just have it way too tight for it to even advance. There we go. Got past that tight spot. And that's why I'm taking and trying to rotate the cylinder as opposed to using the crank handle. Um, that is another issue with this particular machine. Um, it's a little bit on the wobbly side, so it's kind of hard to use the crank handle um, the way it was intended. But um, that's just a matter, I think, of practicing over time or maybe clamping it to the table or something. All right, now I finished looping all of the stitches. I'm going to put the rest of this in here. See, I had way too much with two yards. Probably a yard is good. Um, and I need to continue to make sure those stitches are going down and hopefully they all are. My lighting isn't super great right now. Um, it's a little overcast outside and seeing these stitches at the very beginning, especially with a darker yarn, is a little bit more difficult. But I believe they're all being successful here. So what it's doing with the skipped ones is it's just, you know, pulling a little yarn into that needle and next time around it will actually make a stitch. And one of the things I found helps is to actually tension your yarn that's going in just a little bit, not too hard. But if you tension it a little bit, then you get more even stitches. That's the first row done. Well, almost done. See over here, your stitch doesn't actually complete until it's a little bit further on. And we're already getting to where we had stitches before. Okay, well, oddly my uh, camera decided to overheat and so I had to pause the video and I took that opportunity to grab my weights. That will go in the center here and check for any dropped stitches, missed stitches, um, and correct them. Um, so now I'm going to take and tension this. 
and I'm going to hold on to the leg, but I'm going to try not to tension it too hard. You really don't want to do that. Oh, actually, let's put the weights in. These are just weights I bought for from Ashford for weaving. Um, I don't remember what they're called exactly, but they're just a weaving, a weight for weaving. Okay, so that'll weigh it down a little bit so that hopefully I won't have to keep pressing these down. Um, for the first two weaves, I was using a vitamin bottle, which had absolutely the correct weight, and it helped it go down evenly as well. And that's one of the things you want. You want all of these to go evenly down, which is why you start with a waste yarn, because you want to get it even before you start your sock. Otherwise, you're going to have... Lots of skip stitches, I think. All right, so now I'm just gonna keep watching that just in case. Oh, there's a missed stitch right there. I'm gonna show you how I fix that. I have this little thing for, you know, those uh, knitting looms. It's one of those little hooks. And I take, let's see, where's that skip stitch right here? I take and I grab underneath the um, loop below and push it out while keeping the other one there. And then I pull the needle out towards me a little bit just to form that stitch because it didn't get a chance to form a stitch. Now it doesn't, it doesn't make it perfect. It's still going to be a little funny. Um, if I show you where, 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 like right here on this. That was a big series of drop stitches and of course I didn't have as much yarn there because it was a big series so they're all kind of tight right there. So it doesn't make it nice and even when you pick them up like that but that does help doing that little pull. Alright back to tensioning and watching those because I don't think that there might not be enough weight. And the weights are there to pull those stitches that were already formed down enough that the new stitches can get formed without that other one hanging out with it. You know, so that it pushes it down below that latch. But we still have some of these loops from the in-between stitches. So that... Um, going to make these things a little bit looser. Oop, I heard a skip stitch there. Let's see. This looks like a skip stitch. So again, I pull from the bottom loop out and then do that. Oh, is that another skip? Yep, there's another skip. Now the second row you still have to watch what's going on. I'm kind of stuck behind the needle here. So I got to get that top loop out of the way so I don't pull it off to grab that bottom loop which is the one I want to pull off. And then once I have a hold of it I hold the needle steady so that it allows me to get that loop. So that one's a skip stitch but I can't quite get that one yet. Um, this looks skipped. Alright, so I don't have the best editing software. And I hate to have you guys have to see me what, fixing all these drop stitches. So I think if I have too many more I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video because it's easier to splice together the videos than it is to um, pause on this. This camera doesn't have an actual pause function, so it stops and starts new files each time, which is kind of frustrating, but it's a pretty awesome camera. so. 
I forgive it for its lack of such a thing. So right here is where we started. And I can still see there's just some with just loops. Oh, that's not going to be a fun, pleasant thing because there is a skip stitch here. I don't know, maybe it helps for you to see those skip stitches and how I deal with them. Um, at least for now. Oh, you know what? I see a ton of skip stitches. So I think you get the concept of how to deal with this first row and the second row. So I'm going to pause this until I can get it to actually not have some skip stitches. Um, the skipping, again, is because the second row has these loops and these loops are a little bit looser than the loops that actually formed a stitch. And so I have to continue to make sure that they go down even though there's some weights in here. Um, so I'm going to fix those, finish this row, and then I will start the next segment. Okay, so I went around a few times, as you can see, to get past the point where I was skipping stitches. Um, if you look around here, there's a few skip stitches, like right there, um, right over here and here, again right here, um, but now it seems to be doing pretty good. But I did, did feel like this is not going to be enough weight, so I went back to my vitamin bottle. Um, and this puts the right amount of weight down there. I'm going to have to figure out what I can do differently to get more weight in here. Maybe another set of these weights. Um, I'll have to weigh how much this vitamin bottle is. Because that's about how much I want. Um, does it say on the vitamin bottle? Nah. It just says there's 190 gummies in here. So I could go weigh it and find out how much weight I want. But this is about the amount of weight that I wanted to get it to go around. So now let me rotate. You won't be able to see it quite making these stitches because I'm going to put the vitamin bottle in the way. And one of the things that doesn't work great with this machine is the um, gears kind of slip a little bit. It could be um, tightened up a bit just by sanding. We've done that a couple of times um, and it's gotten better but it still does slip a bit now and then. But you go around and it's making some pretty nice stitches. And you want to keep your weight kind of centered. That's why we wanted the uh, basket to be as centered as possible because you want that weight to be even so you don't have a section where you get a whole bunch of skip stitches because that's what will happen if you don't have even weight. Um, you'll get some skip stitches where the weight is not quite hanging down on there and pushing it um, so that those stitches pop off the needles. So again, I'm tensioning my incoming, incoming yarn. I'm not just rotating here because, like I said, this is kind of wobbly. If I just tried to rotate here, I can do it a little bit, but it's kind of hard to get it to go. Every once in a while, I pull the yarn out because I'm pulling from the center and you know it changes the tension if it's suddenly stuck in that ball. So I like to kind of take the gear and I have a finger on this and I push with my thumb on the gear. That makes it, see there it just slipped and they're slipping. That's the other reason why I like to um, hold on to the gear a bit. But as you can see, it's doing pretty good. I'm not hearing any skip stitches. Doesn't mean it isn't doing it, but I'm not hearing any at the moment. So I think it's doing well. So at this point, I've made a pretty good um, waist yarn section where I feel like I'm not getting any more skip stitches. There's enough centering of the weight that my gauge should be pretty even. Um, it's time to switch to the yarn that I want to have for my socks. I picked this stuff. I don't know what this is exactly. 
Um, it may end up being a tube that's just way too big for socks, but these are more of that same yarn that I got um, to practice with from a person on the Buy Nothing group, my local Buy Nothing group. So if you haven't heard of Buy Nothing, um, it's a Facebook thing where you post things you don't want anymore and see if one of your neighbors um, wants it. Um, it's supposed to build community, um, but most transactions are somebody puts the thing on their porch and the person comes and picks it up. Um, occasionally, rarely, there are little get-together-like things. Um, I think that would make a great um, improvement to buy nothing if there were more of those get-togethers where we could actually meet other people in our community um, that are in that buy nothing group. But I do like the ease and convenience of popping that item on the front porch and letting the person pick it up when they have time or vice versa, not having to be set to a certain schedule before I can pick up something. Um, that I've been gifted on by nothing. Um, so it's an excellent, excellent program. Um, and th there's two yarns wrapped around the outside of this ball. <laughs> and apparently I am trying to unravel the one that is on top of the other. So I'm going to pause this while I try to figure out where the end of my yarn is. Oh, hey, look at that. Never mind, I won't pause it because I just got it. I got the end of the yarn. So now to do this, we're going to cut our, our um, waist yarn, tie the other one on to it, and just pull it in. All right, so I'm going to take a length of it, doesn't matter really, um, just enough, you know, so you can tie a knot. Um, then get that yarn out of the way. Now, I'm going to do it like somebody I saw on YouTube did it. I couldn't tell you who it was. Um, it was when I was first learning how to do all this stuff. Um, and I didn't, you know, memorize who it was that I was learning from. All right, so what they did was they tied the two yarns together. And then they actually pulled it in like that and um, had a little bit of an end in here of the new yarn and I think that's so that you have an end to weave in at the end they didn't really comment on it and this is the first time I'm actually gonna try to do that so of course you're gonna need to tension it a bit so that you don't um, have loosey-goosey stitches here And you have to, since the weight's going to have to be out of my way, I'm going to have to make sure that my stitches stay down here when they get over here so that the loops will form properly. So you can run your fingernail along the back, like the tip of your finger, along the back of these loops to push them down. And do it every you know couple of needles just to make sure that it's doing that. Just going down off of that latch. And at this point, I really could just stop holding on to that and put the weight back in. And then retention my yarn and start spinning around. Now, I don't know that you want me to show you more of the sock knitting. Um, and how it goes around, but maybe you might want to see if I can get in there. You might want to see those needle ends, the needle butts, going around way down there. So they just run along that that raceway, and then when they get to the triangle, this is the triangle piece. You can't really see it, but it goes down to a point. So let's see if I can get it in the camera. It goes down to a point. And then there's a point over here where it gets up high and then it does another point on the other side where the other triangle is. But again, that I think is just so you can crank this in either direction, whichever is more comfortable for you. Because regular sock knitting machines that you buy commercially, they only have one triangle. And 
I apologize for not knowing the name of that triangle, except for Shri Birobin, which is what the file was called um, in the Thingiverse um, website that I got this file for, from. Oh, there's a skip stitch right there. You see that V? Looks like a V instead of an actual little loop. So again, I'm going to come in here. Now part of that is because this is such a loose stitch. So if I tighten that stitch a bit, not too much that I can't get it looped over. I guess I could tighten it afterwards. So get it off that needle and behind it. I'm going to pull there and make that stitch. So now I've got my proper stitch here and I've tightened the stitch below that's going to hold it in place for the next round. And then I'm going to replace my, my weight, my makeshift weight here, and just go back to going around again. Um, but you see how it's, how those little needle butts are just traveling around as I turn the handle. Okay. So I think that is all that I want to show you today. Um, again, if you were to need to do any adjusting, you're not getting the right gauge, that's these little knobs here. You bring them up for a tighter gauge and down for a looser gauge. Um, and you do the one that is going to create the, the stitch. In my case, it's this one over here because the stitches are getting created on this side of the needle, on this side of the where the yarn comes in. So this is the one that's controlling my stitch right now. The other one just sort of says, hey, let's make sure this stitch is the right, um, right size before we put it over here. But it's not really necessary. You could have this all the way up. Um, you might not want to have it all the way down because if it's down, well, all the way down, you can't get past it because the, the triangle does go and rest inside the other triangle um, so that there's no space to go through. So it has to be up at least enough that that needle butt can go under it. Um, but the tighter it is on this side, the harder it is for you to turn um, those stitches, especially if you've got a, a tighter gauge over here by having it up higher. So you kind of want to have them to be even or this one to be up higher than the one that you're actually doing. Um, yeah, I think those are the only tips that uh, I can think of at the moment. Um, I'm not going to use a bonnet for this sock because honestly this thing isn't very tall. Um, real sock knitters or the ones you can buy commercially and not the 3D printed kind, they um, clip onto the side of a table and you know it's the as tall as the table is. Well this one is probably only about a foot and a half tall. Let me see. Now of course that's from the top of the, from where the needles yeah, so 16 inches from the where the needles form the loops to the very bottom where the table is. It's about 16 inches. That's enough to make one sock. Um, so if I want to make two socks in one tube, I'm going to need to make some more legs, which is going to make it even wobblier, which is why I haven't done it yet. More wobbly? Wobblier? Hmm. Don't know which one's the right word there. Um, they both sound right. Anyway, um, so t I think typically anyway you would put some waste yarn in between your two sock tubes. Um, so starting over might not be that bad as long as you don't change your tension on your active tensioner. Um, that triangle that is doing the actual tensioning for you. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post a comment below and, and ask me any questions. I did get this file from Thingiverse. It did take me um, it did take me about five days to print it. The cylinder itself took about 24 hours. The, um, the housing took about 22 hours. And then each of the pieces were three to eight hours long and there's a bunch of pieces here so it did take about five days um, 
on my Ender 3, my Creality Ender 3. Um, I used Hatchbox Filament. You can find this file on Thingiverse. You can also find my make on Thingiverse, which I did put as many tips in there as possible on the making of it. Um, not on the using of it, which is why I've created this video. Um, but on the making of the machine and including which needles specifically were purchased um, and a picture, a close-up picture of how we cut them. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. I don't think there's anything else that I can can uh, mention at the moment, uh, but feel free to comment on any questions that you might have. Um, And look for my make on Thingiverse if you want to try and make one of these. Okay, quick little addendum. I thought you might like to see the magic of the stitch happening. Not that it's magic, but... <laughs> Alright, so... Is it close enough? Sort of in focus. I'll show you this part if it'll focus. Nah. Alright, we're just going to have to be out here and hopefully on a bigger screen it's easier to see. So, as you can see over here, you can see how the little latches are grabbing hold of the yarn that's going in and pulling it down. And then over here, you get to see where the stitch goes right on through, just like that. And again, I'm tensioning this yarn and holding onto the leg right here. So this is sort of an awkward angle to show you um, what's going on here, but that's how that works. And I can go pretty fast with it. There we are. Thanks for watching.